Yep, it's another month and another pile of records. So let's get to them. First up is Neuron Spoiler with their second album called Second Sight. This came out in 2017, follows their release of Emergence, which came out in 2013. Uh, it comes in a lovely blue vinyl. And this is a UK band, they do traditional metal. Uh, you can hear shades of Maiden and Priest, like you can with a lot of bands. Uh, but you can also hear some early Fate's Warning. Though vocally I would probably see you hear a little bit more Ray Alder than you do John Arch. Uh, they also have a video for the song Slay the Beast, which is off this record. Uh, pretty good stuff. I definitely recommend Neuron Spoiler. Next up is the latest release from Metal Church. This is From the Vault, which is a collection of B-sides and cover songs and live material and new studio tracks. Uh, the new studio tracks are probably the best thing on here, but some of the other stuff's pretty good too. Um, I really like the cover of Please Don't Judas Me, which is originally a Nazareth song, though Black Betty's on here too, which is kind of funny. Uh, the live version to Anthem to the Estranged, a uh, great song. It's from 1989's Blessing in Disguise album originally, um, and I love that album. It's probably one of my favorite Metal Church albums, next to The Dark. Um, yeah. And uh, there is that. And of course, the infamous guitar with a bar across it because, again, they're going to have it on every Metal Church album. Uh, again, the new studio tracks are pretty cool. Um, maybe they're leftovers from Damned If You Do, which is the previous studio record from the band. Uh, I would definitely recommend this record. There's some really good stuff on here. Maybe I would have liked some more from the vault kind of material from the old days, maybe from the late 80s. But if they didn't have that, this is good enough. Another curious inclusion is this Obi strip. It's right here when you buy the record. Uh, Obi strips are an interesting thing. They come from Japan originally, where they're actually needed because Japanese consumers don't necessarily know English. So they get Obi strips, which in the Japanese language have things like track listings and production and all sorts of information that they need as consumers. But Metal Church is an English-speaking band, and I don't know why they need an OB strip. Uh, you know, if you're an American consumer or an English-speaking consumer, uh, you don't need an OB with English writing on it uh, and in a band that sings in English. So, again, it's a curious inclusion. I don't know why they use it, but it's there, in case you wondered. OB strips. Okay. Anyways, Metal Church from the vault. A bit of Belgian speed metal here for you in the form of Evil Invaders. This is their 2013 debut EP. Uh, this is a 2017 repress, incidentally. Uh, the original had the logo here in this space that kind of makes sense for a logo, but instead they shrunk it and put it in the corner. Um, the design nerd me kind of wants this logo over here, a little more dead space, but neither here nor there, I guess. Uh, there's the back for you. There's a lot of influence here from earlier bands, uh, early genre bands, uh, like old Metallica, uh, Exciter, and of course Razor. Uh, Razor would probably make the most sense considering that Evil Invaders is a Razor album. So there's def that's not a coincidence. You know, there's definitely some influence there and uh, really kick-ass artwork as well. Anyways, Evil Invaders. Next up, Riot City, with their one and only album so far called Burn the Night. This is a Canadian metal band. Uh, they're traditional metal, but also some speed metal in there. Uh, a lot of people say they hear a lot of Judas Priest in this. I don't hear as much of it as they do. Uh, maybe some earlier, faster uh, accept, maybe, a little bit. I also hear a touch of Riot, which is fun because the band's name has the word Riot in it. Uh, comes in red vinyl, by the way. It took me forever to find this album. I was looking for it for quite a while. Amazon sold out of it pretty quickly, but Hell's Headbangers had it, which is wonderful because we love Hell's Headbangers here. And uh, yeah, so really great to have this album. This is Riot City with Burn the Night. Here's a record I don't see getting mentioned much in the VC, even for metal folks. This is Frail with their debut LP, 1692. Uh, it's doom metal. Uh, the project is between this lady here. She's the vocalist. She does these sort of breathy, haunted vocals. Um, she has a male partner, too, who does some occasional growl vocals. Um, he doesn't show up as much. It's mostly her. Uh, but when the guy shows up, it kind of solidifies the impression that this band's a little bit Paradise Lost influenced. Uh, maybe the later Paradise Lost in particular. 
Um, there's some good tracks on here. Uh, there are music videos for Gods of No Faith and Godless, uh, which I would recommend to you. Uh, the album also comes with an interesting book, or at least mine did. Maybe it's a limited edition thing. You should probably check to see. Uh, they're on Bandcamp, so you can contact them through there. Uh, the book is largely... Um, uh, lyrics. Uh, there's some information on witchcraft in here. Uh, they seem to have a bit of a, an occult influence. Um, there's also a, a, an entire section on the uh, Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic uh, with a bunch of the things they have in, in there, uh, including, interestingly enough, uh, uh, the owner's former Church of Satan membership card, which is kind of fun. But uh, this is a really nice job. They did a fantastic little job on it. It's got a nice, smooth surface. So nice. Of course, taking a look at the vinyl, it is this very interesting olive and black marble. I kind of dig it quite a bit. Also, the custom disc labels are kind of cool. Uh, again, I found them on Bandcamp. That's probably the best place to find them. I got them from a suggestion. Uh, I didn't go seeking this band out. Uh, Bandcamp thought I would like them, and they were right. I checked them out and was immediately in love with them. In fact, this album is on the consideration table for my top 10 albums of 2020. And I know we're only halfway through the year, so it could get bumped. But for now, it's being considered. Um, I really dig it. Um, really decent doom metal. Really good stuff. So anyways, Frail, 1692. And speaking of Paradise Lost, this is their brand new album called Obsidian. Came out 2020. Uh, this is definitely on my consideration for the top 10 of 2020 list. Uh, it's probably definitely going to be on there. I can't imagine it won't be. Um, some marvelous art design throughout uh, with the gatefold, but also on the back cover. Um, I hadn't heard Paradise Lost in a while. Um, I was into their 90s material. I love Shades of God, but also Gothic and Lost Paradise. Um, I kind of lost track of them after the 90s. And I've heard some of the more recent stuff. Um, I haven't listened to this particular record, but I'm pretty excited to hear it uh, because it's, you know, Paradise Lost. And I remember really loving this band, so I definitely want to catch up with them again for sure. As for the vinyl, mine comes in Bone with Black Splatter. That's what the label is calling it. We'll take it. Uh, limited edition, of course. I don't remember the number at all. Uh, another thing the album comes with, or at least my copy came with, they threw it in, it wasn't in the record specifically, it was in the package, is a bit of a promo poster, which is a good time. Always love the promo posters. You can see some other releases from the band down here. Uh, good stuff. So anyways, Paradise Lost with Obsidian. Funny story about this album, uh, by the way, this is High Command, with Beyond the Wall of Desolation came out in 2019. Uh, the funny thing about this is, I didn't know about this band. They're from Worcester, Massachusetts, I should mention that. And that's significant because I was from Worcester, Massachusetts. I spent a great deal of my childhood there, went to high school there. And uh, I occasionally go down there as well. I have a lot of friends still, and I like to go to Ralph's, which is the awesome metal club in Worcester. You get to see a lot of cool bands, local and regional and international and all that stuff. So anyways... I had never run into this band before, and then I was watching a video from a vinyl community guy on YouTube uh, from Australia, of all places, and he showed this record. I'm like, wow, that sounds pretty interesting. So I went to the band camp, and I bought this vinyl, and then I saw they're from Worcester, Massachusetts, and I'm like, wow, of all the places to be from, how did I never hear about them at all while I was in town, but then I heard about them from a guy down under. It's so funny, a real roundabout way to hear about high command. So anyways, I just had to tell that story. This is their first full-length album. Uh, they put an EP in 2018 called Primordial Void. Uh, this one comes in shocking white vinyl uh, with some great disc labels, too. It's great art design throughout this record. I really dig it. Um, they are crossover thrash, very catchy tracks. I'm definitely spinning this one a lot. And maybe you should buy it and spin it a lot yourself. This is High Command with Beyond the Wall of Desolation. Next up, a little metal from Spain. This is Iron Curtain with Danger Zone. Uh, interesting little band. They have a mix of styles, uh, some traditional metal, uh, some thrash, some speed, a bunch of hard rock, which is interesting. Uh, the vocalist in particular seems to have a number of influences that are pretty apparent. Uh, there's a little bit of Rob Halford in there, but there's a lot of Gene Simmons, which brings us back to the hard rock. And maybe why some of the purists out there might not like this record. Also, the low production is a thing as well. I think the songs are pretty catchy. I think they're pretty decent. Um, this album also comes with a poster, which is fun, of the band. Uh, show it to you right there. There they are. 
I'm also hearing a little bit of early Running Wild going on. Again, a mix of styles here. Um, this is their fourth and most recent LP, incidentally. And uh, I dig it, but again, the purists might not. So there we go. Iron Curtain with Danger Zone. Next up, a bit of blackened speed metal from Scotland. This is Hell Ripper with Black Arts and Alchemy. It came out in 2019. Uh, this follows their 2017 release of Coagulating Darkness. That's a full album. This is an EP. The EP was put out by Reaper Metal, uh, a great little label. Uh, they have an awesome YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, you should. Uh, they do a lot of interview stuff, and they do some podcast stuff as well. And uh, yeah, really great. Reaper Metal. You should definitely check them out. If I were to imagine a tour with this band, and I kind of like to pair bands up in my head, see who they would play with kind of thing, I can definitely imagine these guys touring with Midnight. Uh, it would be a perfect bill in that regard. Um, so if you're kind of wondering what Hell Ripper sounds like, imagine they would tour well with Midnight. I don't know. Maybe that would help you. Anyways, they got a new album coming out in October of 2020, and uh, this was 500 pressed, uh, just in case you need to know that as well. Anyways, Hell Ripper with Black Arts and Alchemy. So in an earlier vinyl haul, I showed a Grand Magus album. In fact, I showed their latest album. And I was asking folks to give me a recommendation on a really great album to buy next. And a whole lot of people said this album. This is Iron Will. It came out in 2008. It's their fourth album. And uh, the vinyl is pretty interesting. Uh, the label is calling it Transparent Black. I think it's more of a, an amber or a brown. But, you know, call it what you like. Uh, fans of Candlemass and Manowar might dig this band. Uh, I think they're a better Manowar than Manowar is these days, to be honest. Um, but there is some common ground there between Candlemass fans and Manowar fans if you listen to Grand Magus. Um, again, the Candlemass influence is there. I don't want to overstate it, but it's definitely there. Of course, as I mentioned in that previous vinyl haul, this is a Swedish band. Uh, their heavy metal meets doom metal. Uh, great stuff. I'm so glad that so many of you recommended this record to me because I'm a big fan of it and I'm going to seek out more Grand Magus material. Absolutely, absolutely. So anyways, Grand Magus with Iron Will. So I should point out that this is my very first Black Dahlia Murder album. I know, shocker. Uh, considering they have eight albums before this, they go back to 2003. Uh, they're a pretty big band, uh, especially in the melodic death metal world. So I decided to give them a shot. And this is Verminous. This is their latest album. And I love this album, for sure. Right away, I'm just going to say that. In fact, this is probably in the list of my top 10 of 2020. Um, I don't think it's going to get bumped. I just don't. Uh, fantastic little album. Uh, there is the gate fold and the back. So this release has 14 vinyl variant possibilities out there. I got myself the neon green one. I believe this is an exclusive indie record store release. Uh, that's what the website was saying. Uh, the, all the websites I went to on this one. Um, so there you go with that. So as a new fan of this band, I'm probably going to mention some things everyone's known for quite a while. Um, I'm really digging the guitar work of Brandon Ellis on this record. He came in on the album before this originally, so he's relatively new. I really love his guitar work. Uh, he definitely brings a lot of the melodic to the melodic death metal. Um, I hear shades of sort of King Diamond-esque soloing. I'm definitely thinking of Andy LaRock in that respect. I think that might be an influence on him. So I definitely dig that inclusion. Um, it really makes it Oh, so awesome. There's also a thin layer of black metal going on in here, and a lot of people know I'm not the biggest black metal fan, but I'm kind of warming up to it a little bit, at least through this band. So I'm not sure. Maybe this band will become my gateway to black metal. We'll see. I can't make any real promises there, but so far I'm really digging it. I kind of dig everything about this record, including this amazing artwork. I should mention there's also a couple things in here. I really dig the insert. With this artwork in particular, uh, you would think lyrics would be on there, but they're not because they're on the gatefold. And there is also a poster, a rather humongous poster for this album in particular. And there is the gigantic poster. So yes, very excited about this album. Definitely wanting to hear more from this band. In fact, if you want to recommend the next Black Dahlia Murder album to me, you should definitely make a comment below. Uh, definitely let me know. I, I am a newbie to this band, so I would definitely appreciate the recommendations, for sure. Anyways, this is the Black Dahlia Murder with Verminous. And that's it for this edition of Vinyl Hall. Remember, as always, to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, three ways to help out the Accusation Network. I like to get the word out, so definitely help a brother out, for sure. Also, let me know in the comments which of these albums you liked or didn't like. 
uh, or music recommendations. I mean, if you have some recommendations of other albums from these bands or other bands entirely that fit the genres, definitely. I always appreciate recommendations. Always looking for new albums to listen to. Yeah. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.